4.30 a.m. going to the airport. Got myself a direct flight, actually, for the first time in maybe ever out of Austin. We're going Austin to JFK, New York City, with the boys. There's probably 10 of us in a group chat. We're all getting flown out by a company. We'll talk more about that later. And then while I'm there, there's a handful of really cool people that I'm looking forward to meeting as well that are either in the online business owner space, in the high ticket space, that kind of thing. So as always, we're taking you guys on the journey. Hopefully I don't forget to film some of the cool stuff and I'll try to make it insightful for you guys that are getting into sales, getting into remote sales, starting an online business. Hotel run through, bed is kind of low, it's chill. Fifth floor, some courts, street down there. Bathroom, big mirror, that's it, it's pretty chill. Travel hack, yes, yes I'm metabolizing it all. Check. How to say what's up to Ock, chicken parm panini, we'll see what's up. dude doesn't even make sense probably the most locked in office that you could be in just sitting here responding to emails buying some new softwares drinking some arctic vibe i might be here for the whole trip just to work just to lock in Yo, tell me, tell me about San Antonio. Dude, honestly, San Antonio has a lot of history to it, dude. You know, we got Mama Margie's over there, bro. You want a bean and cheese at one in the morning, 99 cents. <laughs> Crazy, right? Yeah. Unlimited chips with your queso. Yeah. It's wild. They had issues with Disney lawsuit. About to hit the Central Park Loop. It's about 6.2, 6.3 miles, maybe 6.1. I wasn't expecting to go out last night, but we went out last night, and I didn't get much sleep between then and now. It's like 6.45 a.m. So I'm hoping and praying that I can pull through. All that aside, it should be fun. Maybe the most iconic running spot on my Strava so far. We'll see how it goes. Waiting for the boys. Only the real ones are gonna pull up because it's so early. Oh shoot, first bacon, egg, and cheese, let's go. I feel like I haven't done enough yapping yet, so let me put you guys on some game. If you haven't found out yet, I'm out here because this company, WAP, flew us out, myself and a few of the buddies in Austin, and honestly, a lot more people. Some people are here because they did $500 collected in seven days, they hit the challenge. I'm not here for that reason. I'm here probably because clients, and we're pretty connected to a lot of processing volume, and they want more people to process. So let me put you guys on this, not any kind of sponsored thing. I don't have an affiliate link for WAP, but pretty much what WAP is, if you're not familiar, is all these businesses, uh, online businesses, they are using Stripe, right? They're using PayPal. They're using all these other ones that get shut down. They hold your money. They don't give it back. And then they ban your account if you get like one chargeback or one refund, especially at low volume. So if you're familiar with Shopify, Shopify, when you buy something off of Shopify, on your statement, it's going to say Shopify, right? So all the Shopify users are using the Shopify like processing account. So meaning there's like millions of transactions going through daily, probably like multi millions. Well, WAP does that for info businesses, communities, subscription stuff. So instead of you having a single Stripe account that gets maybe one transaction a day and you know, you're at really high risk because of the, the refund or uh, chargeback rate being 1%, WAP is processing millions of payments per day. So if you start processing with WAP, you have a lot less risk of accounts getting shut down, money being held, not having a way to process money. Cool thing is I'm in Austin now. I want to say WAP was founded in Austin. They've worked in like what a lot of processors would deem like high risk industries, like trading, sports betting, they're still in those industries. Uh, they've been doing that for like two or three years now. So they're really rolling it out to people and info creators, that kind of thing now. So if sports bettors can run their groups on WAP and not have any issues, your fitness coaching program is probably gonna be all right too. So the reason I'm making this is because if you're watching this, you're probably either a sales rep or a high ticket business owner in this space. And there's nothing worse than not having a way to process payment, especially when you are paying money to get people in front of you to process payments and then you can't do it. Literally burning money. This is something that I've told a lot of people that I know about. I've put some of our clients in touch with the WAP team. I don't have much else to say about it, but if I know you, you're a business owner, you're a sales rep, you're in my community, 
your uh, partner of the agency and you want to start using WAP, just hit me up. I can make an introduction to the guy that can help you out. Now back to the agenda. I just got off live community call. My last like real full day here, ran the Central Park Loop, 930 pace. I didn't know if I was gonna make it because we went out last night, went to Soho House in Brooklyn, which was super sick. We were out a little bit later than I was expecting. I woke up and I like didn't know if I was gonna make it. I was the one who coordinated the run, so I couldn't not make it. I stuck through it and yeah, we made it happen. But I'm about to head over to the, the WAP headquarters, meet up with some of the guys that I'm here with from Austin. Day, not too many people have obligations with WAP while being here. So probably gonna ride into Manhattan, see some of the city and probably get a big group of guys and do something fun. Tomorrow I have a podcast recording, I think with Larry Antiporta, high ticket legend, run some sales teams, close a lot of deals himself. I don't know if it's his podcast, my podcast, but he's got a super sick apartment overlooking the Brooklyn Bridge. I'll probably, if I go there, I'll show you. Hey, one more thing before I wrap this up. I was on this community call and we were talking about the Austin meetup that we're having uh, September 28th or 27th, 28th and how important it is to get around the right people a lot of you guys watching this you're probably not in a major city you might be outside of it you might be in the hometown whatever even if you are in a major city you haven't yet experienced the effects of a true network a network of people that are doing what you want to do that are ahead of you or people that are just like right by your side and i've met so many business owners that i know for a fact whether it's somebody that i met here or somebody that they know like our agency is going to sign more clients we're going to sign more done for you sales teams i met one guy who's a marketer he worked with elon and we're already like exchanging information and all that stuff to hopefully partner on something in the future. That guy actually with one of the other guys that we're here with closed a deal. They didn't like sign a deal, but they basically got a verbal on a deal that's going to net them both six figures a month uh, with a huge creator. So if you're in remote sales or you're a business owner, your agency owner, your coach, whatever, it sounds stupid. It sounds fake until you really truly experience it. But the network is like, it's literally everything. That's how we've got all of our clients. We don't have any churn in our agency with our done for you sales teams. And all the clients that we have have come from people we know and the work that we've done. We don't do any outbound, we don't do any ads. Uh, we just go, we meet people, we do good work, we get referred, and honestly, we have more work than we can handle, which is a good problem. If you're a sales rep, why would you not wanna be connected with other sales reps that are doing what you wanna be doing? Why would you not be wanna be connected with guys that are making 20K a month, taking five calls a day, four calls a day, on their laptop from anywhere in the world. Because when their team is hiring, this isn't this isn't tech sales. They don't go to LinkedIn. They don't hire recruiters all the time. They ask internally, who do you know that's good? So there's a lot of fluff in the market. There's a lot of people that are in the market that shouldn't be in the market. They don't know what they're doing. So they want referrals. Who do you know that's good? Who have you worked with before that would be a good fit for it? For this and if you're the guy that you know congratulated this guy on a, on a previous win or complimented something or just connected with them in an organic matter you come to mind so you need to get on a first name basis with as many people in the remote sales space as possible if you want to be in that space for a long time and not have to freak out when you lose an offer and wonder how you're gonna make your next dollar the very best guys that I know in this space many of them if they were off an offer today they had to go find new work as a remote closer it's Thursday they could probably have something lined up by Monday that's going through the weekend too just by the five people that they know that are closest to them that are doing shit in this space. I know it sounds stupid. Every time that I go on a trip, I go to a different city with different people, I meet a new group, meet a new company, whatever it is. Towards the end of the trip, I'm always thinking, dude, I should just do this more because also the in-person thing, like it hits so much harder. Building trust in person is so much easier than over a Zoom screen. You can do it over Zoom. My partner and I in the agency, Cole, dude, we ran up like we ran up over a million dollars in our agency and I had never met him in person. We've literally met one time. Or the meetup is gonna be the second time we meet in person. But if you have the opportunity to go somewhere, it might be expensive, it might be out of your comfort zone, but as long as you don't stop doing that thing, you will ROI. Make sure when you do go to these events, like you're not just not with everybody. Like I am, even though I'm tired, I was beat down, I didn't wanna to go to the run, I didn't wanna to go to some of these dinners, I didn't wanna go out. I am like purposefully putting myself in those situations to expose myself to more opportunities, more connections and all that kind of stuff. And it is one of the best things that I've done since I've been in the online business space. So take that advice. If you don't take anything else from this video or any of my videos, take that advice. Insane squad. 40 deep here. Last day playing Uber Eats, heading to Larry, filming a podcast, going 21st floor. Let's go. We're out here at Larry's penthouse. Oh, baby. <laughs> Probably the best view I've seen since I've been here. I will be filming an outro I won't forget, like in the last Portland video.
Hey, yo. We got back to Austin the same day, went to UT versus UTSA game, and just got right to it. I think Monday, yesterday, I had like eight, nine, ten calls today. I have the same because I blocked off a lot of my uh, week last week. So we're back in the hot seat, ready to go, hoping to close some agency deals, and should be good. A lot of exciting stuff cooking up in the agency right now, onboarding some new clients. Teams are still closing deals, so everything's cooking over there. I did film that podcast with Larry, so I'll link that below. My first podcast, uh, we talked about a lot of different stuff, so pretty cool uh, experience. I'm gonna wrap up this video here. So my last request, if you're a business owner and you don't like doing sales or you wanna sell more of your thing and not have to do more yourself, hire my agency. That's what we help people do. Info, agency, consulting services, software, if it's high ticket, anything high ticket, events, we can help you sell it. And if you're a sales rep, that is remote or you want to go remote and you want a better job, better contracted remote setting closing job, that's what I help people with as well. That's what I do. That's what I've been doing. I am still taking sales calls, but they're for the agency. It's not super high volume like I would be if I was closing, but everything that I've done in this video, you could get that life by being a remote appointment setter or closer. It's the same stuff there. So business owners or sales reps, give me a follow, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff below and let me know what you want to see in the comments uh, content wise moving forward appreciate you watching peace